I want to know favorite love song. Put it in the comments. Now's your time. Go ahead. You could sing it if you want to from your couch. What is your favorite love song? Put those in and I want to see uh, what you got. So go ahead and do that while you're typing in your favorite uh, love songs. Maybe it was from when you were a teenager, boys to men. Maybe it was uh, something that's that's recent. I don't know, but go ahead and, and share that. Today is going to be a little bit different. Um, typically, I like to, okay, here's a, here's a story from the Bible, and we're going to dissect that and talk about that today. Um, well, it's not going to be like that. It's going to feel a little bit different, but hey, guess what? Church is a little bit different right now. Going back to that verse in, in Galatians where it says, Whenever we have the opportunity, we ought to do good. <laughs> you're going to, at the right time, you're going to reap a harvest of blessings. So don't get tired of doing good. And I know there's a lot of us that it can be hard right now in relationships. And so today isn't going to be so much focused on, okay, here's a Bible story and let's talk about that. Come back next week or any of the 51 other weeks of the year or jump in on our freedom online and we're going to dive into the Bible. We're very much a Bible heavy church, but today is going to be about doing good um, and, and things that we can practically put together on just being a better human <laughs> on how we can grow. Um, and so today, as we talk about marriage, it's not going to be necessarily the way because I'm going to share some things from Reed and I and our relationship and in our marriage. It's a way. So you're going to, some of you are like, mm, I don't know. It's not the way. It's just a way. And that's how we're going to go uh, with that. Let me check and see what some of you guys are, are putting in there. Uh, Laura, you said favorite love song, uh, Because You Love Me. Uh, we got some George Strait, I Cross My Heart. Um, Kayla says Feet by Rodney Atkins. Michelle, God Gave Me You by David Barnes. Um, I'm already there by Lone Star. I would start doing some karaoke right now, but um, it's better if I don't sing. There's a reason I don't I don't sing, and my wife does. Um, God bless the broken road. Uh, Rachel, you say when you say nothing at all. Rachel, good to see. You. I think you're from I want to say Missouri, but if Matt's watching, a good friend of mine too, Matt. I hope you're doing doing good as well. Um, good to see you guys online. Hey. Um, I've seen some funny memes that have come across about when we're talking about relationships and marriage and uh, they just get me laughing. And so one of them that I saw this week, a couple of weeks in isolation with the family, what can, what can go wrong? <laughs> um, maybe, uh, maybe a lot there. Um, also my wife and I, we played this fun game during quarantine. It's called, why are you doing it that way? Anybody else? Come on. Are you playing that game? There's no winners in that game. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. And then I laughed at this one. It says day seven of quarantine and my wife took up gardening, but I don't know. I can't tell what she's going to plant. I don't know. Maybe you guys, I hope you're not there yet, but that's going to be kind of the point of today. As we talk about marriage and relationships, um, we're going to talk about marriage in crisis. Like we're facing a crisis and I don't want us to um, have a, uh, um, a mar I want to try to avoid a marriage crisis while we're dealing with a crisis. And we just got to admit right off the top that it is stressful, that we have, we, we have a grief. All of us are having some type of grief just because we've lost some things. Uh, we've lost control. We, we, we had a system of things that were happening and now we've lost control. Some of us uh, financially, if you took a look at your 401k, now it's a, a, a 201k or a 101k, like, or, or maybe we've lost a job. There's a lot of things that were normal, familiar, and we've lost that. There's a grief that we need to acknowledge. And then we got new things that are thrust upon us, new, new homeschool. <laughs> Hello, there you go. Deal with that one. New things like routines, working from home, a lot of just new things that would be stressful. And then we're just some of, we're just restricted. I'm, I'm, I was on a Zoom call, our pre-service leader huddle, uh, with, with several of our leaders earlier, and I saw people who I haven't seen in six, seven weeks, who I'm used to seeing at least on a weekly basis. And I miss you guys, and we can't, we can't see each other. Um, talking to each other isn't, isn't the same. We definitely can't touch. It's almost like you can't even look. And now if I see you, you got like a mask on, and we can't breathe on each other or anything like that. It hurts. It's a grief. And there's conflict and tension with all of those things, and it's breeding, it's building up this tension 
in our relationships and specifically in our marriage. If you're dealing with conflict and tension in your marriage right now, breathe. Breathe. Because we are in this together. You're, it's normal. Okay, we're, we're all, I'm, I'm a pastor. I love my wife. But guess what? We're not perfect. We, we, we've had some issues. We've had to, we had to, to put the pause button. Time out. We're gonna, we need to talk some things through here because we're not on the same page. You're not my favorite person right now. It's okay. Like pastor's not perfect. None of us are. So breathe, breathe. Okay. One of the things that we believe about marriage that kind of gets us set up in the wrong way from the start is that marriage is supposed to make me Happy. I want you to go ahead and, and fill in the blank for, for this. Fill in the blank. Marriage is what? What would you add to that? Marriage is. Go ahead, put that in the comments. And what would what would you add? Marriage is supposed to what? Just take a look at so the movies. I'm the king of the world. And then Rose. Rose is like, Jack, I'll never let you go, Jack. I won't let you go. And then what does she do? She lets him Go. Movies have set us up just like in the notebook to say, oh, marriage is supposed to make me happy. Ask, ask any couple right now. <laughs> Don't put this one in the comments. How's that working? Maybe, I mean, I, I, I want to be happy, but at the same time, maybe marriage isn't designed for me to make me happy. You know, oh, he'll just, she'll just love me for me. She'll, she'll, she'll change for me. She'll, she'll meet all of my needs, you know, and then, and then we'll complete each other's sentences. Like maybe we built up marriage uh, in the wrong way. Maybe marriage, I want to, I want to argue that maybe marriage is meant to make us grow. Marriage is meant to make us grow. A lot of us right now, I kind of feel like it's like a workout. <laughs> I've, I've had to do this at home workout today. We got some at home exercises that you're going to do relational exercises for your marriage, for relationships. Um, but I've been doing some at home workouts and I'm sore and partly because, uh, I'm doing new exercises that I haven't done before. Like I'm used to going to my routine at the gym, but now I'm going and I'm doing some jumping jacks or jump rope or I'm sprinting. I'm just doing different things and I'm sore and I'm hurting. New muscles are being worked out. And so there's the idea that for me, I'm just like, oh, I don't want this. It's too hard. I don't want to continue. But if I had the right mindset, I would see that that actually means that soreness means I am growing. It's just new muscles that are being worked out in a new way. And I feel like for a lot of us right now, we have some muscles, some relational muscles that are, that are sore right now because we haven't used them in a long time. And now they're being forced to be activated. And so I want us to, to lean in a little bit. And so some of you are like, yes, yes, I got it. My, my wife is here and she so needs to grow up. She so needs to build some muscles. She needs some work. I'm so glad she's going to be here. And if that's you, you better hope she doesn't. If that's you saying, well, this is for them and they need to watch this, you better hope they don't grow up. Because if they do, th they're going to leave. Because they, they, they don't want to be around that person. This is about you. Okay, everybody, this is about me. I'm going to take this lesson, these exercises, and I need to grow up. You're going to take these and, and you are going to lean in and work out and grow up. Marriage is meant to make me grow. It is, marriage is meant to make me better as a human being. And it is my job, not my spouse's, it is my job to be a better spouse, period. That's on me. So we're going to take some ownership. We're going to do five exercises today. Are you ready? Are you ready? Get loosened up. Get loosened up. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. First exercise, first at home exercise that we're going to do is called number one, apologize. Apologize first. It looks a lot like the exercise of humility. Now I know right off the bat, you're thinking, Mike, through COVID-19, I've been flawless. I've been perfect. All of my reactions have been amazing and stellar. I haven't lost my patience once. 
I haven't raised my voice. I haven't thrown anything. I haven't hit it. I mean, I just reacted perfectly throughout this whole thing. Sorry, Mr. Perfect. Go ahead. Practice the exercise of, of apology. Go ahead and get it out in your system right now. You can actually type in, I'm sorry. Put it in the comments to say, I'm sorry. Because we have all, every single one of us, have, have screwed up. This even happened to me a couple nights ago um, with the boys. I'm, I'm starting to get tired, a little bit impatient. And I kind of got onto my boys. They were, they, were, they were supposed to be brushing their teeth, but they weren't brushing their teeth like they were supposed to. And so I kind of got onto them a little bit harder than what I would normally do if I hadn't lost my, my patience. And my wife, very lovingly, but also she's like the Holy Spirit to me, kind of talks to me. She said, um, they got a little bit up. You might want to apologize because um, they're, they're, they're kind of a little bit upset about that. Um, and, and so when you do this exercise, don't, you're going to have, um, you're going to want to blame. You're going to want to defend some of the, the resistance that comes up in your body. Uh, pride will come in and you're like, ah, you know, when you go to do this exercise or this stretch, you're going to feel that muscle of blame coming up or defense coming up. Go ahead and work against that. Because I wanted, I had like 10 reasons as to why I was justified in being upset. But a leader, a leader will, will apologize. They know how to say, I'm sorry. And they, and they will own it. Now, you're also going to have the muscle uh, that will try to resist this exercise of owning too much. Don't own anything more than your side of the street. Don't take blame for everything that's going on, but certainly own your side of the street. So apologize and apologize first. Not none of this. Well, I'll apologize if they do this or when they say they're sorry, then okay, I will. No, 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 no. A leader understands. A leader understands. I'll apologize first. I'll take the lead and I'm going to own that I screwed up. So I apologize to my boys and I, I, I will continue to apologize as I screw up. So that's the first exercise is apologize. Second one, show grace, show grace. That a marriage is like a mirror, okay? And that mirror can be brutal sometimes. Mar marriage is meant to show you, you. So some of that conflict that you're facing right now with your spouse is actually by design. Maybe there's a good reason they're showing you a lack of respect. Maybe you're not acting very respectful. And so it, in a lot of ways, it shows you, you. Um, a second close to marriage is your kids, because a lot of times I will get upset with my kids and I look around and I'm like, dang it, that's just a little me running around. That's me. It shows me me. And that's what marriage does. Only thing in COVID-19 with, with quarantine right now is that every issue, every underlying issue is magnified right now. What, what, what used to be a four in a relationship is now an eight because it is under a microscope. Reed is not used to seeing me day in and day out all the time. I used to go to work at the lab. I would come home at the end of the day and she'd be like, Mike, why, what's that on your face? And I'm like, a peanut, peanut butter? It looks like some peanut butter. She's like, how long has that been on your face? And I'm like, ah, uh, lunch maybe? And she's like, don't you have any, any friends? Like, is anyone helping you out here? You're just walking around with food on your face. And now we're here all the time. Where, where she can she can hear me she can hear me eat <laughs> all the time and and hear me walking around or different things we're not used to that and, and another thing that you need to know when you do this exercise of showing grace you're going to want to compare you're going to want to compare and resist with that um throughout you're going to look you're on social media and so you it's so oh, easy to look on social media and see how they're doing it. Well, if they're, look at that spouse over there. Look how they're doing the other things. My boys and I, we've been going on hikes and I love to record them and I'll show some highlight videos and definitely they are highlight videos. You get the highlight reel. But we went golfing and we've gone on hikes and different things and I've had some people like, oh man, can I just train with you and your kids? Your kids are so awesome. Or, or dad of the year, whatever. Don't compare. Please don't, because that is going to set you up for a lot of failure. If you're jealous of what they got on their lawn, okay, I got this from Craig Rochelle. If you're jealous of somebody else's lawn, it's time to water your own, okay? If you're jealous of someone else's lawn, it's time to water your own. And you need to show a lot of grace during this time, okay? There's going to be some things that upset you. We talked about that quarantine game of the game of, well, I wouldn't do it like that. 
Okay, something I removed from my vocabulary very early on in our marriage, and it's really, really helped, is the, the statements of, I would. If I were you, I would. If I start out a sentence with, I would, or you should, I'm going to go ahead and hit pause. That's going to go through a filter, and I'm going to try to eliminate those statements from my vocabulary. Well, Rita, you should, or I would if I were you. That right there has helped me a lot. And so I'm going to pick on the ladies, and then I'm going to pick on the guys. Ladies, um, I realize you have had a lot of these routines probably set up already. And there he is. He's teaching, how, here's how you make some peanut butter and jelly. You know, and he's going and he's doing it different or whatever. And you're like, dude, we don't, can, can you please go back to work? Because we've already had this system figured out and we got, we know how to make peanut butter and jelly. We do it every day. We don't need your help. I get, I get that, but you're going to need to show a lot of grace. If he's teaching them homework and he's doing it differently, if he's loading the dishwasher and he's doing it, if he's doing something differently, he's not causing any harm. It's just different. Let him do it. You've been begging for him to, to, to do it for quite some time now. And if he's doing it and stepping in, let him do it. Let him fail. Let him figure it out. It's going to be different. It's going to be different. Um, but guys, at the same time, don't be patting yourself on the back just because, hey, I did the laundry today. I cleaned the toilet today. I, I, you, you've got a PhD. You ought to be able to figure out how to do the laundry. You, you, you should know how to do the math. It, you should be able to spend time more than two hours at a time with your kids and be okay. You could even, hey, you could go out for the night and different things like that. Guys, we need to step up too. Okay, show each other grace. Show yourself some grace. And here's the equation, and I'm going to move on. High stress, which we are under, plus high emotion, okay? Put those two together. When you got high stress, high emotion, you need even higher amounts of grace, okay? High stress plus high emotion, you need higher grace from one another. And during COVID-19, please exercise higher grace. Third thing, find some rhythm. Third exercise, you're going to try to find some rhythm. This has been the biggest challenge for Rita and I. Number one challenge that we had is just, we, our rhythm is gone. It was, and so I remember when we were uh, uh, a few weeks ago, we were doing something and I stepped in and I said, I would. If I were you, I would. And guys, have you ever got the look? Like, like that look, like the look that, that can just kill you. And what, like, I got the look and I was like, uh oh. So it was like, all right, boys, time out. <laughs> um, movie time and the boys are yeah movie time and then we're like we're gonna have to have kind of a conversation here and and part of it was was just having some expectations our rhythms had changed but having some expectations that had gone unspoken and we had to communicate show each other a lot of grace and we communicate and trying to find some rhythms and part of it is using some i statements not you do this and you do that it was I'm going to use some positive I statements. So positive I statements, not like I need you to not be a lazy bum. Okay. That's not positive. Okay. Just because you started with an I doesn't mean it's positive. I'm noticing that I'm starting to feel overwhelmed. I'm feeling overwhelmed and I need some help. We got to start speaking some of these expectations. So in finding rhythm, there's three variations to this exercise. You want to kind of blend all three of them in as you exercise this out. The first one is finding points of connection, okay? If you're going to build some rhythm in your relationship, you need to intentionally seek out some, some connections. It's going to look different for everyone because different things are going to connect with you. But what, like for us, it's hugs. What, for me, it's the first time when I see Rita in the morning, and I've even told her this. I said, this is one of my favorite parts of the day. This is more for me, but this is how I feel connected to you. I will give her a hug first thing in the morning when, when I get to see her. Like, I'm usually up early. I'm an early bird. She'll wake up a little bit later. And then when she comes downstairs, and I'll give her a hug. Okay, that for me is, is huge. But another one we found is looking each other in the eye. It's, not, it's, it's a connection of just looking each other in the eye. So sometimes it'll be coffee in the morning, and we just sit. And we'll have a, a brief conversation, but it's that eye-to-eye -eye contact. Sometimes it's at dinner. Hey, boys, it's go, you guys go watch a movie. Mommy and Daddy, we're going to sit and have a dinner, and we just have some face-to-face -face time and have some eye contact. Physical touch that doesn't end in sex, okay? It is okay to have some physical touch, and it's just I want to be connected to you. It doesn't have to lead to the bedroom. And that has been a huge connection. We do some yoga. We get outside and do some exercise. We go and hiking and different things. You've got to find points of connection throughout the day 
that communicate. So you're gonna to have to communicate that to your spouse as to what that is. A second variation to finding rhythm is connecting conversations. Because you gotta get out of the, the here's a lazy way to, 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 to have a connecting conversation. How was your day? You were literally together all day long. How about, what made you laugh today? Just, just a little change to spice it up. What, what's something that made you laugh today? Ladies, if you, if, you wanna, if you wanna get your guy kind of built up and fired up, what did you accomplish today? That right there, they're gonna start talking. What did you accomplish today? Well, I'm gonna tell you what I, you're gonna see them perk up, but you're gonna be a, a chance to have a connecting conversation. And listen, our question that started today um, what is your least favorite chore? What's your favorite chore? That actually came from our connect group. Our connect group had posted that online and we had a great conversation about chores. So just finding some, some connecting conversations outside of the routine. So don't ask, how was your day? Let's go beyond that. Ask just a little bit of a, of a twist on that to get, to get us going. And then finally on this making rhythm, cause this is a big one. This is a big one, at least for us. Uh, the third variation, make a, make a schedule. Okay, we're six weeks in, seven weeks in. What's the next six, seven weeks? that are, What are they going to be like? We don't know how long this is going to go, right? I mean, we're hoping soon, but we honestly, we don't know. So what's it going to look like for you? So at the beginning of the week, either tonight or tomorrow morning, Reed and I will sit down and we'll have a weekly calendar. Here's, here's our calendar for today uh, or for the week. And each day, we don't normally do this, but in COVID-19, we've sat down daily. And we've said, okay, here's, I know we've talked about the week, but here's, here's what's going to happen today. Here's some changes that are to the schedule here. Just a reminder, because there's a lot going on. It's a reminder, this is happening this afternoon at this time. We got this meeting, this meeting, and we talk about our schedule. And we've also carved out scheduling. This works for us, just different days mean different things. So maybe Monday night's dinner out night. Monday, it's Monday, we're going to have dinner out. Tuesday night, game night. We're going we're, we're gonna to get some board games out. Do a puzzle together or something. It's, it's Tuesday night. That's what we do on Tuesday night. Wednesday, Wednesday's hump day. So maybe you schedule hump day. And yes, maybe it does need to be scheduled, okay? Put it on there. Put it on the calendar. Friday, for the boys and I, we've made it field trip Friday. Hey, dad's the teacher on Friday. We're going to go on a field trip. I my, have Rita teaches on, on uh, Mondays, and she teaches on um what days does she teach? Mondays and uh, Wednesdays and on Sundays. She's with the boys right now. I got them on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. And Fridays, we have field trip Friday. Find a schedule. Okay, so find some rhythm. You're going to apologize first. Hire Grace. Make a, Find some rhythm. The fourth thing, and this is huge, schedule separation. Se separation might actually prevent separation. Okay. This has been one of the top questions. How do I get some time alone? I need some space, okay? So you just gotta understand the dynamic. When you are close together, eventually too much closeness uh, creates a, a, a dynamic in us where we wanna separate. But then also separation actually drives a dynamic where we want to get closer. And so it kind of fluctuates these desires back and forth. So we got to schedule in separation. And let me just say, for some of you like, well, I got an essential job and I have to do this. Here's something you need to know. And this is what Rita and I discussed a long time ago. Whoever has the kids. Whoever has the kids for the majority of the day, who is that for? Whoever has the kids for the majority of the day, they have the hardest job, period. Whoever has the kids, I don't care what your job is, whoever has the kids has the hardest job. We have that agreement. So you, you want to be helpful in this. You're going to ask the question when you get done with work for the day, and you've been doing your job and you did it well, you cranked it out. When you come back and they've been with the kids, here's your question that you're going to ask. Four words. Very simple. How can I help? How can I help? And then whatever your spouse says, do it. That's what's going to be most helpful because they've been with the kids all day. The dishes have never stopped. 
The cooking has been going on. You got homeschooling that's going on, and they're just done. I'm done. I got licked today. I I uh, been wiping uh, butts, and they use my arm to wipe their nose. I, I'm done. Okay, I get it. How can I help? This is teamwork. This is teamwork and marriage. And I'm going to step up and I'm going to serve. You want to be like Jesus. Jesus didn't come to get served. He came to serve. That's what a leader is, is someone who serves other people. So what's that like for you? you got to ask this question to your spouse. How can I help? And, and understand, I can stand on my own two feet. I actually need my wife to have some space because it's going to drive the closeness. And I'm okay with that. Okay. Some of us are co- we get in this whole codependent conversation, but no, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to free her up. So Rita, she goes and hikes. I go and do exercise. Maybe it's a bath. Maybe it's reading a book. I don't know, but I just need some space. That's okay. Exercise. Schedule separation. The last one, ride the waves. Ride the waves. Find something new, something different. Um, a lot of them are like, oh, I don't want to cause any waves. I don't want to cause any conflict. This is too hard. No, ride the waves. That's where the fun's at. Went on vacation. I want to show you this. I went on vacation a while back. Um, and I, I, I'm not a surfer, but I saw these guys. Look at these guys. They're surfing. It was so cool. So amazing. Now, granted, this is like 60 degree water. It's really, really cold. And so um, I decided, you know what? My word for the year is embrace. So I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to be the dad that, that gets up there. I had a body board. I'm going to get out there in that water. This is my family laughing at me. Okay. <laughs> they're, 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 they're laughing at me and uh, I'm not okay with that. So I'm going to show them up here. So here I am, and that's me out in the 60-degree water, and I'm doing that. Now, I go and show my boys how to bodyboard. I go do that whole thing. It's taking the breath out of me. They don't even watch. They just don't even watch. They don't even appreciate it. But I'll tell you what. I will tell you what. That right there was a moment for me where I woke up and said, hey, you want to have some fun? Ride the waves. It hurt. It took the wind out of me. It was hard, but that was one of the things that I'm going to be willing to tolerate some discomfort for some growth in my life. These conversations of marriage, they're not fun. They're so not fun to have. Oh, I feel so exposed when I share my feelings. I don't like talking about this. It takes too much energy. It seems like we've talked about this years and years and years again. And I'm working muscles and I'm sore. I don't want to go there, but it is so worth it. I had a friend of mine a few years ago. I had a conversation with him. Him and his wife had been married for 30 years. And he looked at me and he, he said, Mike, this last year, year number 30, was the best year of my life, marriage. I said, really? He said, yeah, and it was the hardest year of my marriage as well. I said, what? what? I don't understand. You said it was the best year, but you said it was the hardest year. He said, yeah, my wife at the beginning of the year. So I'm going to go to this conference, this marriage conference. I want you to go with me. He's like, nah, I ain't going to no conference. No way. <laughs> I, I know what they're going to talk about. And, and they're going to want me to talk about those things that they're talking about. I'm not going. And she's like, well, I'm going. And I want you there. And so they compromised. And they both went. And he said, they talked about those things. And he opened up and he talked about those things. And he said it radically changed when he got over his pride. He said there was so many things to say sorry for. I started, he started opening up about his feelings. There was hard conversations. It's like some, some scars. There was some band-aids that got pulled off and it revealed some scars and opened some wounds that he didn't want to talk about anymore. It was crazy. Because, but he felt more connected and intimate with his wife than he had ever been before in 30 years because he exercised. He exercised some relational muscles that he had never worked before. And he realized this is what marriage is supposed to be. Marriage isn't supposed to be to serve me and make me happy. It's supposed to make me grow. It's actually your spouse's job to help you grow up. And when he started working that, their relationship took a turn for the best. And that's what I want for you. That's why I'm sharing this today. To say that there's some things that maybe you're stressed out about today, that you've been crying out to God for him to change. Now there's stress and now there's tension, but you're seeing, oh, this is actually to make me grow. So let's lean in. Let's ride some waves. Let's tolerate some discomfort. Get the surfboard out and let's go, baby. Because God has something good for you on the other side. In Mark chapter 4, I want to read this verse to you. Um, today as we close out. 
Uh, I'm going to bring it up on the on the on the screen here. Let me bring this up, and then right here, look at this. G and what this is going to set up for next week. By the way, next week, don't miss next week. It's going to be amazing because there's something in Mark chapter five that all of this is a setup for. It says that evening, Jesus said he came to his disciples. Let's cross to the other side of the lake. Let's go to the other side. So they took Jesus in the boat and he started out, leaving the crowds behind. All other boats followed, but as soon a fierce storm came up. He, the high waves were breaking out and the boat began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping. He was sleeping at the back of the boat and with his head on a cushion. They're thinking they're going to die. Chaos all around and Jesus is still in control. He's asleep. And then his disciples woke him up shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? Don't you feel like the disciples sometimes? Jesus, don't you care? God, where are you in this? crying out but what i don't want you to miss as all the chaos was going around and jesus was asleep he responded when his people cried out it is okay to cry out to god god where are you i need you wake up we're drowning here cry out to him save me i need some help and then the focus shifted it shifted from all about them and their circumstances. This tension, this storm turned from all about them to all about him. He calmed the storm and everything shifted. What we, we expected God to protect us from the storm when all along that storm came along to prove his power. He's building you up in this time right now. During COVID-19, he's building up your marriage and your relationships, your faith, your emotions. He's building all those up for meaning and purpose because there's something for you on the other side. Did you see? He said, we're going to the other side. We are going to the other side. There's something for you there. Marriage is not about looking back. Oh, if we could just go back to the way things were. We used to connect when we, were, when we were first together. We used to talk. And if we could just go back. No, marriage is about moving forward. So what's your next step? Is it any of these exercises? And if you're feeling today, I want to close this out. So you're already wanted and valued. No matter what situation you're in right now with your family or with your spouse, you're already wanted and valued. God knew you long before you were born. <laughs> he chose you. You're here listening to him today and he loves you. And he has a purpose for you and it's built on him. Your foundation is built on him. He's the one that calms storms. He's the one who knows how this ends. He's with you. He's for you. And he never loses. And the gospel is this. While you and I were sinners, while we screwed it all up, he paid the price. He paid the price for you because he loves you. Because he wants a relationship, not religion, not do, 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 do. I know we're doing exercises so we can do good, but we don't do those to earn favor with God. He already loves you. Let that be your foundation. Let that be your source. Let that be your fuel as you go and you serve and you love the people around us. While, while I was a sinner, Christ died for me. That's the gospel. And guess what? The gospel changes everything in my relationships. The gospel changes everything in my marriage. It's not about me. It's about him. I, I'm not, you're not here to serve me. I'm here to serve you. That will change the dynamic in your relationship. Start there with Jesus. Build a relationship with him. Do good things for others, not because it earns you anything, but because he loves you. That's your source and that's your fuel. So today, let's pray and then we're going to close out. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you right now that you're speaking to people's hearts. I thank you right now that you're telling them how much you love, not condemning them. Maybe maybe you're showing them what the next step is and oh, it's hard. It's like peeling off a Band-Aid or looking at a scar. I don't want to bring that up again. I don't want to have that conversation again. But Lord, I know you are trying to grow us and make us better. So Father, I pray for myself. I pray for my marriage. I pray for these marriages. I pray for these relationships. Father, Bless them, show them the next step that they need to take to grow stronger in their relationship with you. And for some of you right now, he's speaking to your heart saying, you've never had a relationship with me. You've never had this relationship. So God, right now, speak to their heart. 
If you want to give your life and just say, hey, I, I need to have Jesus as my Savior. Let's pray this prayer together. Everybody can pray it with me. Say, dear God, I know I'm a sinner, but today I ask you to forgive me for all my sin. Jesus, come into my life to be my Lord and my Savior, my forgiver, and in the best way I know how. I receive you and I receive salvation. Thank you for saving me. That prayer, that prayer, if you just prayed it, if that's your soul's cry to God, it's like, I need a relationship with you. I've been doing it all wrong. Just drop in the comments right now. I receive Jesus and you will see people celebrate with you. We want to celebrate. I receive Jesus today for the very first time. If that's you, I receive Jesus. Jesus. And let's celebrate freedom. Let's celebrate a life that has purpose and meaning. There's purpose for you on the other side. And thank you so much for taking the time to listen to the message today. I hope you felt inspired to take your next step of faith with Jesus. Just a couple next steps that you can take coming out of this. One, leave a review or a comment or share this message. That really does spread the message further and faster when you do that. Secondly, if there's a next step that you need to take coming out of this, head on over to our website, click get involved and let us know exactly how you can take your next step. We would love to partner with you in that. And finally, if you have been impacted in a positive way through our ministries or your family has been impacted in a positive way through our ministries, go on over to our website and click give. And if you want to partner with us financially, that would be huge in getting the message of Jesus out through our ministries. Thank you again for stopping by the podcast. Have a wonderful week. God bless.